Greetings Antique Radio Enthusiasts, welcome to another edition of Antique Radio Archaeology. Today we are going to produce a schematic diagram on a radio that I know absolutely nothing about. Now this radio here is a 1920s world radio and one of the problems that I've found in trying to do any research on this is if you go into or onto the internet World and radio are very generic terms. So if you start doing research, what you're going to find is there's thousands and thousands of sites out there, but nothing will get you to the information on this particular radio. So what I'm going to do is I want to pull this thing apart, and I want to actually draw out the schematic diagram on it. Now, what is a schematic? A schematic diagram is simply a wiring diagram that shows how the components all hook together in a logical format. Now, the schematic diagram really got started back when radios were first produced in the 1920s by manufacturers who did blueprints on the radios themselves. And, and the, these were required in order to get patents on them. So, in doing these blueprints, they created these schematic diagrams, submitted them for patent, got their patents approved or disapproved, whatever. But those were the original schematics. Now, in about 1931, a man named John Ryder produced a book, or a series of books, called the Perpetual Troubleshooter's Manual. And what this has is schematic diagrams of radios starting in about 1931. Now, in about 1947, another company jumped on board and they started producing the Howard Sams Photofax. Now, Photofax are really kind of like the writer's schematics, but they expand on them by allowing you to see pictures of how the radio is laid out and it would give you parts lists and troubleshooting tips and it just kind of took the writer's manuals and expanded on them a little bit. So from about 1931 on you can find schematics for just about every radio out there but if you're dealing with 1920s radios you're kind of on your own because there's not a lot of companies that publish their schematics out there in the marketplace. So you have to rely on people that are into antique radios to come up with these schematics and publish them. So what we're going to do today is take this radio, we're going to get inside of it, analyze how it's hooked up, and see if we can't come up with a actual schematic for it. So the first step in this process is we need to take a look at what we got going on here. What I've got is a 5 tube, I'm missing one of the tubes, TRF receiver from what I can tell, and uh, what I need to do is pull the chassis out and see what we got. Uh, one thing I can tell you off cuff is I do have speaker output. Looks like I've got my antenna input. I don't see any power anywhere, so this is missing a wiring harness as evident by the holes in the back of the cabinet. So I'm going to have to figure that out somehow. So the first step is going to be let's remove the chassis. Oh, there's a wiring harness. It does have a wiring harness. Good, good, good. Okay, well this gives me a little bit more hope here. Yeah, I just need to figure out what all these wires are. First things first, I'm going to go ahead and pull these tubes so I don't break them. I don't even know if any of these tubes work, to be honest with you. First of all, I know I have five tubes. 
I know they're all 4-pin. Four 4-pin four tells me they're all triodes. These two fat pins here, those are all filaments. So one of these is plate and one of them is grid. The plate is the output of the tube, the grid is the input on every one of these. So, knowing that, I can kind of already formulate what I want to do as far as uh, doing up a schematic on this. All right, I have a, this here is a power switch. Here's a resistor, a variable resistor. All my dials are hooked to variable capacitors here. So I know I have three variable capacitors, I have a variable resistor, I have an on-off switch, I have two transformers. Now these coils are in terrible shape here. Uh, this is going to be interesting. Now I do have a grid leak condenser right here with a grid leak resistor. And I also have two other capacitors in circuit. Three. There's one over here. So, with all that information, I know what my components are. I have these coils. I have my capacitors. I have these coils here. I have that one resistor. I have the variable resistor here. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get started on tracing this thing out and drawing it up. So before I get started with the actual schematic itself, what I did is I, I took some time and kind of looked this thing over really well to see how things were put together. And uh, I did find some things that were kind of unusual about this uh, particular receiver. And it's not so much the circuit design as much as it is the layout. What I discovered was, unlike a lot of TRFs, this isn't laid out in a straight line like a lot of TRF receivers would be. Uh, by that I mean, when you have a TRF receiver, you're going to always start off with your RF section. And you're going to have your first RF amp, your second RF amp, and then you're going to go into your detector, followed by your first audio amp and then your second audio amp and associated circuitry. So what I discovered was these tubes are in kind of a weird order. My first RF tube is right here and I went ahead and labeled all these. And the reason I labeled them is it's going to make it a lot easier when I start doing the schematic. So here's my first RF and the reason I know that is if you follow the antenna and what I discovered, I've discovered this little tag here, and it gives me a little bit of a color code as to what wires go where. My antenna is the lavender wire, which is right here. So with that being my antenna wire, that is my first coil that it's going to hit. And the first coil always goes to your first RF, which is here. My second RF is over here. My detector is over here. As you can see, we have the grid leak right here. And after the detector, you're going to go to your amp first amplifier and then your second amplifier. And I also went through and I kind of followed and I saw that this capacitor is hooked to the detector. This capacitor is hooked to the headphones out. This one's hooked to the speaker out. So C1, 2, and 3. My coils L1, L2, L3. So they all follow a sequence. Also my variable capacitors, VC1, VC2, VC3. Here's my R1. This is my rheostat. And then I got my, my T1 and T2, which are attached to the first uh, audio amplifier, second audio amp. So now that I have all this laid out, let's go ahead and get started on the schematic. Uh, first of all, let's do our antenna. antenna. And then I'm going to come down, I'm going to do about three windings to represent that first coil. And then about six windings to represent that second coil. And I'm 
gonna come back over here. I'm gonna come back up here. And, all right, so once I leave this coil, I'm coming over and I'm hitting my R2. And that's a variable resistor where the wiper is actually on the grid side of this first RF, which is right here. This is the grid. So what I want to do is I want to draw a resistor and my wiper is going to come back and then I'm going to come out here and I'm going to hit my grid of my first two. Okay, this is my grid, my plate, bring this up, this is my filament, and once I leave the plate here, I'm going to come back over and it hits the inside coil on L2. That inside coil only has a few turns, so let's just do a small little coil here and come down. I'm going to come down. Let's go about to here, I think. And then I have this other side here. We're going to come down a little bit. So it comes out the other side of this on the outside here. And it's going to go over and it's going to hit this R3 right here. And again, same situation. I'm going to come back down. R3. And then I'm going to hit another tube. Now, here's my L1, here's my R2, this is my R3, this is my L2, and now I'm going to leave the plate on, this is my first RF, this is my second RF. So I'm going to leave the plate of my second RF and I'm going to come over and I'm going to hit another one of those little coils. I'm going to come down about there. Alright. So I've got the other side here. And then come off of here and this is my L3. So I've come in, I've hit my small coil, I'm coming out my big coil and the big coil is going to come out, it's going to hit this grid leak capacitor. So let's come in here in parallel to the capacitor is the grid leak resistor. So that's my grid leak. 
comes in, it's going to hit another tube. My plate. Filaments. So, this is my detector tube. D E T. My detector tube is going to go in and it's going to hit a transformer. Because my detector tube's here, it's going to come off here and there's my T1. It's coming in on this wire here. So, let's go ahead and draw in a transformer real quick. T1. So I go on a transformer T1 and my comes out my secondary of the transformer it comes over and it hits the grid of my amp 1 or my first amplifier. So let's go ahead and see if we can't get that over here. Draw another tube and again let's get our filaments there so T1 and this is Audio amplifier one, so amp one. Once it leaves amp one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come over, and here's amp one. It comes out of here, boom, it hits T2 on the primary of T2. So let's go ahead and draw in T2. come out of T2 and what it's going to do is it's going to come over here and hit my amp 2 grid. So I've got another tube that I got to run into. So let's go ahead and run it over here. Come down here and my last tube, my second amplifier. When it comes out my second amplifier, it comes off the plate, comes over, and it hits. These are my two speaker terminals. So it's hitting one side of the speaker terminal, and that looks like that's the only connection to it. So, if I come out here, and draw a speaker terminal. Draw that to there, and I got my amp two. So there's my complete signal path going one direction. Now, <laughs> here's where it gets to be fun. I do have some other things that I have to add. Now, I do need, if I come back over here off this R2, I'm running over and this goes down and it hits this VC1. So I have to draw in my VC1, 
which is a variable condenser. And I should have left some more room for it, but oh well. Uh, I'll just bring that over to here. This is VC1. I also have off of R3, the input of R3, it comes down and hits this VC2, another variable condenser, so I need to do the same thing there. Come down. This is V C two. And if I look at my grid leak back over here, it comes down and it hits V V C three. So if I come down here, I do the same thing. B, C, 3. Okay, coming off my plate, I have this C1. Oh shoot, I don't have enough room. Yeah, I'm going to do it like this. All right. Come here, do hop over that wire there, and then I'm going to come down. That's going to be my C1. Which is this goober right here. Okay. Let's see. Let me take my L2 down to about here. If I follow my L2 inside, it's going to come out and it hits the other speaker terminal here. There's a bunch of stuff going to that speaker terminal. 90 volts coming in, it's hitting that. My T2 transformer is hitting that. My L2 is hitting that. And I need to come out somewhere and do another speaker terminal would be my LS loudspeaker. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. I'll go all the way down from here over to here. Okay, so there's my L2 going to my loudspeaker. I got some other things tying into it. I have the bottom of the primary of T2. Here's my T2 primary. So I'm going to put a little dot here showing that connection. So the other side of my L3 this L3 right here is going to come down okay there we go alright so those are all my connections this is going to be my 90 volt wire I need a ground and my VC1, VC2, and VC3 all tie to the chassis ground, which is here. 
This capacitor ties to the chassis ground and it brings that ground over to this wire here. So this is a ground and it's also my phone terminal over here. So I need to get a ground bus wire going and I need it to be a phone jack as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do another long wire all the way across. And that's going to be one of my phone jacks. Interestingly enough, my there's my this wire here is right here and it's tied to that ground wire so I'm going to bring that down and let's go ahead and tie that to that ground there we go uh, let's see what else we got on the ground bus I've got a capacitor here it's tied between, okay, I'll get to that later because I'm going to see how many other connections I don't want to get too crazy with this quite yet. Um, there's my, oh, I got a ground wire. That's my ground wire. So I do have a ground wire. So I'm going to come down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little, this is going to be my GND ground. That's my ground wire. Alright. Um, I do need my two sides of my filament. Now my filament buses are right here. This one up here and this one down here. And there's another, there's two buses up here, one bus down here. Let's see what's tied to it. Okay, this top bus is tied to my amp one, my amp two, oh, my detector filaments. It's my amp two. Okay. My amp one. My bus wire. And my detector. Those three are hooked to that bus wire. Now my first RF and my second RF, those are tied together with this bus wire right here. So let me get that one started. And there you go. So I have one side of my filaments. The other side of my filaments are all on this bus wire here. One, two, three, four, five. Every one of those is hooked to that. And it doesn't look like I have any other connections. I don't believe. Nope. Maybe. No, I don't. Okay. So I'm going to come down three more here. Let's get this other out the way. Alright. 
there's that part of the filament. So every one of them is going to hit this. So if I come down here, right here yeehaw here we go I, I can go ahead and finish these these are all my filaments let me go ahead and get those hooked up boom So all my filaments are hooked up. My VC2 goes to my ground bus. Remember my ground bus is, this is my 90 volts, this is my ground bus. Uh, let's go ahead and just so I can remember that I got my 90 volts, let's go ahead and hook, let me get my 90 volts down here. tying to that one. Okay, and that's my B plus plus 90 volts. All right. Okay. So this is my ground bus and I know all my variable capacitors go to it so I can go ahead and tie those in. My C1. Okay, the other side of C1 ties to that ground bus as well, so I can go ahead and bring that down. Second area T2 is tied right here to here. This is the chassis, and this chassis is tied here, which is coming over here and hitting that ground bus. So this is all part of the ground. So the Bottom half of my secondary on T2 goes to that ground wire, ground bus. So let me go ahead and bring that down. Here's my ground. Okay. My bottom part of my secondary on T1 is tied to ground. bottom half of that primary is coming out okay it's on this yellow wire that's my B plus 45 My L2 goes to the ground bus. Or does it? Let's see. Where's L2 goes over there? There's that one and that one. Got those two. That one. Oh, here it is. It comes over. And it is. It's hitting the ground bus. All right. So I can go ahead and do that one real quick.
My L3 has got to come over to here, but I also have my R1, which I haven't put in yet. My R1 is tied to the first and second RF. One side of that R1 is tied to this bus. The other side of that R1 comes over here to the switch, but it's also coming here via wire to the other bus. Okay, I'll, I'll figure this out. All right. You go ahead and do a... Ooh, I'm do a jump here. There. Okay, and the wiper side is on the switch side, which is going to, that's it in the three over there. So it's the side here is where the wiper is going. Okay, so this is my R1 here. Okay, now my L3, I don't have to go over here. I can come straight down on my L3, which has to go to that bus. Oh, no, because the L3 has to go on this side, the wiper side, doesn't it? Well, I can do this. <laughs> Here's how I'm going to do it. It's kind of weird. Okay, so I got my L3 tied in where it needs to be tied. Now I also have my switch, my S1. Well, here's what I'm going to do. It's on this side of the resistor. Going to my green and yellow. Green, yellow, trade. That's my A-. minus. So... Come out here. What I'm going to do is here, here, A minus. Okay, this is my switch S1. Okay, so C2 is going to come down here. And it's going to hit my ground bus. That's C2. Okay. And C3, which is this one here, goes between speaker and ground. Loudspeaker and ground. Loudspeaker. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to tie, I'm going to make my C3 right here. Let me do that. C3. I need power going to this bus bar here. This is my filament. So I got my A minus here. So I need an A plus, which my A plus is going to be red, and it goes to that, yeah, that multiple thing there. I got red. Oh, I got my A minus our A plus and my B minus are tied to that. Okay, so I guess I'm going to take any one of these junctions here. I'll just do it right here. That's going to be my A plus. That's going to be my B minus 45 volts. And my B plus 45 is actually going to be my B plus plus 90 volt. Or, sorry. It would be my B minus minus 90 volts. Yeah. 
Now I have all my connections, I think. 90 volts, 45. Same as ground. All right, that's it. That is the complete schematic. It makes sense. I've got my stuff coming in here. Here, 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 here. I want to put this in a digital form and uh, clean it up a little bit and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so here is the schematic that we just drew up. And here is the digital version that I created. So as you can see, doing a schematic is not that difficult. If you're new to the radio world, doing your own schematics is actually a great learning process. You're going to learn about signal flow. You're going to learn how different manufacturers created these particular sets in this variation. You're going to know more than a lot of people do about their own radios by just getting in there and mapping them out. It's a great, great way to instill radio knowledge in yourself. And it also builds your own confidence because as you do more of these, you become so familiar with them that you realize that you actually know what you're talking about. So there are schematic symbols online you can learn. Uh, you can look at other schematics to see how the schematic diagrams are laid out if you're not familiar with them. But when you're first starting, you're, you're not going to be able to do a perfect schematic right off the bat. It's going to take practice. I mean, they're, they're very simple. They start with the beginning, which is the antenna coming in. And you go through your RF section, your detector section, your amplifier section, and then you're going to go out the speaker or headphone. Very, very simple. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button. If you haven't already done so, please hit subscribe. In the meantime, happy restorations everybody. I really hope to see you next video. Goodbye.